Hi, hi Ben. I'm a philosophy major here at UF, and oh I'm sorry. That's your first Can, <laughs> well, I appreciate, um, I would consider myself a conservative Democrat, and I appreciate your view on a lot of normative issues. But, You're the last one, so be <laughs> careful out there. Yeah, I appreciate your view on a lot of normative issues from healthcare, I disagree, um, mm -hmm. because of the theoretical underpinnings and underpinnings, so I'm gonna like address a question about that. Sure. Real well, sitting down. <clears throat> a state is an entity that exists for the protection and flourishing of its citizens. If it didn't protect and promote the flourishing of its citizens, it would be useless. As a society, the people that make up a state, we have certain obligations to our fellow man and women, not just negative responsibilities like do not kill, but also positive ones to promote the welfare and human rights of our fellow man. My basic question is why you don't view healthcare as one of those inalienable rights that's necessary for citizens to thrive, such as defense, the police force, or firefighters. Um, after all, health is necessary for our very existence. It is no less necessary for us to be citizens than the loss of life from foreign invaders or a robber. So um, I understand the question. This is a, yeah. By the way, this is a moral argument, not a practical argument. Right. No, I got, I've got you. I've got you. And it's, it's a good question. So, so two things. One, you and I have a different view of rights. I don't believe that rights, there, there is such a thing as a quote-unquote positive right. I believe you have inalienable rights from government and from other human beings. And what I mean by that is to be free of other human beings. So I have a right not to be murdered by you, but I don't have a right to take your money in order to feed myself. Okay, that's, that's the difference in positive right now. That's called the topic over people. Like, I'm a utilitarian, so I believe in maximizing human flourishing. Okay, so there, there's a lot of problems with, with utilitarianism as a political theory, uh, as opposed to sort of a rights-based Lockean political theory. One of the big problems with utilitarianism is you actually have to define your terms. Well, Mill was a utilitarian. I know, and I agree with, I agree with Mill's basic concept of the, the, that the government should only regulate externalities, which is sort of a Mill perspective, but... Which you don't, because actually regulating healthcare is not regulating externalities, it's regulating somebody's own care for themselves. Um, but, the, but the problem with utilitarianism as a theory is that if it benefits the collective, you can crush the rights of the individual. Utilitarianism, including vision of individual rights, is one thing, but, individual, but utilitarianism without that view, which is what you're talking about, you end up inevitably with the collective destroying the individual. So, you know, the difference I would pose between firefighting and police is that the police are there. It's the job of the state to protect you from other people. That is the job of the state, or national defense, right? That's the job of the state to do that. I don't think that it's the state's job to provide, to, to make you flourish. It is your job to make you flourish in the absence of curbing other people's rights. That's where we have a fundamental disagreement, and that's also why, here's a, here's a quick explanation of healthcare, and I can do this in, I promise, like a minute and a half. You ready? There's only, so Dan McLaughlin of National Review put this the best way. There are three elements, three things you can have about healthcare. You can have universality, affordability, or quality. You can only have two of those three. There's no system that provides all three. And there's certainly no system that is, so if you want universality and affordability, it's gonna be crappy quality. That's nationalized healthcare. If you, if you want universality and quality, then you have to bankrupt the country and spend an inordinate amount of money on your healthcare system. Um, and, uh, and if you want what I want, which is affordability and quality, then you have open competition, but it means that some people are going to have to rely on a community of people around them, but not through government. And this is the, this is the great gap, I think, is that it used to be, Tocqueville talks about this, that we all used to be members of communities, religious, social groups, and we all used to take care of each other outside of government. As government grew, we withdrew. And so as Robert Putnam says, the sociologist in Bowling Alone, we've all become sort of these people who live in our houses and we don't talk to our neighbors. If we have a problem, we go to the government. Instead of going, like, if I have a problem, I go first to my family, and then beyond that, I go to my synagogue. And that used to be the model, and that should be the model. But we're signing a social contract, so we are responsible for I never, taxes. I know, we're responsible for taxes that pay for things of which we have an equal share of withdrawal, and, protect, and, and to protect us from, I mean, they, they call it a non-excludable, non-competitive good. You, you have the ability to, to pay taxes, but you get back out of it. Pay, having me pay taxes for your failure to buy health insurance is you stealing from me and having you tell my wife, who's a doctor, that she must care for you no matter what price you choose to pay her as involuntary servitude. 